Hey everyone, today we are going to work on blender brushes in Procreate 4. So I'm going to show you with the new settings what we can now do in Procreate 4 with the brushes. Let's start by looking at some of their new brushes. So in the artistic category, the turpentine brush is similar to what we're going for. Currently I have the black chosen from the palette, so that's going to show with this brush. But see how it's dragging the color that's already on the screen along with the black? This is what we're going for, that drag of color, but without the added black. Now to give you a good idea of where we're headed with this, I'm going to run you through some blender brushes that I've already created. Now these particular brushes are from a set that is available for purchase on my website, and it's eight different brushes, all with different textures. But once I show you the idea of this, then we're gonna walk through a simple blender brush of your own. And then from there, you can take it into different textures and different shapes and have a lot of fun with it. So here I'm just going through the different kinds that I have. I have an oil-based one, I have a water-based one, I have a simple smooth blender, and I believe uh, I have a sponge blender. This is a sponge one here. And then I also have a splatter blender and a splash blender. This one is a rough edge blender. So basically they're taking the color that's already on your screen, on the layer that you're working on, and moving it around. It's not adding any new color, it's just taking the color that's already there and moving it to different places that are on the same layer. Now Procreate does have a smudge tool, but it operates a little bit different. These blender brushes actually pick up the color and move it around the screen based on the texture and shape of the brush that you've created. The great thing with these brushes is that it uses the colors that are on the screen. So you don't have to keep going back and forth to your palette to remember what colors you used. You can add in more colors if you want to, but you don't have to because all the colors you're using are on the screen and the brush is moving them around for you. Now let's get started making our own blender brush. So you're going to go in and create a new brush by clicking on the plus sign. Then we're going to go down and pick our shape source from the Pro Library and we'll just pick a simple round circle. And then we're also gonna pick a grain source and you're gonna scroll down a little bit to pick the perfect square blank. So now we have our basic brush and that would be just your plain ink brush if that's where we were going with it, but we're not. So here you wanna go into dynamics. Here you have your choice of normal, glazed, and wet mix. Normal and glazed have always been there, but wet mix is their new one. You have dilution, charge, attack, and pull. So we're going to play around with these and I'm going to show you how they affect the brush and how you use them to turn them into a blender. So if I have them all turned off, this is what I get. I currently have the black chosen, so of course it's going to show up, but in my blender I don't want that. So dilution is going to be the setting we're going to play with. If I take it right up to its max, and then I give it a try, you can see that nothing shows up. That's ultimately the where I'm gonna want it. But for now, I'll put it halfway so I can still see it in the preview window. So now the next thing, I'm just gonna reduce my spacing to nothing here under the stroke setting, and then go back to dynamics. And we're also gonna look next at the pull setting. So I'm gonna put the dilution back to the beginning and we'll just try this pull. Now you're not going to see a lot of difference because it's full black. But if I bring the dilution up to halfway, now you're starting to see where it changes direction. You're seeing some of the pull happen. And now we'll go back in and move the dilution right to the top, leaving the pull at halfway, and see how it's starting to pull the color around the canvas. Let's go back in and we're going to play around with the charge. Now charge gives you something at the beginning. So I have it set to the black color. So it charges it with some black only at the beginning. I'm gonna turn the charge off and bring the attack up. The attack doesn't give you anything at the beginning like the charge did, but as you draw, you get some of the color showing up part way through. So it has more emphasis in the middle where the charge is the emphasis is on the front. I don't really want the color, so I keep those as low as possible. Let's try the pull up to its max. Now see, wherever I first started pulling from, that color will continue to pull through the whole canvas. You may want that for some blender effects, but it's not what I'm looking for, so I'll bring my pull back down to the halfway point, and then I will just reverse that. 
and now you can see as I drag my pencil around it's pulling the color nice and gently. And I can increase the size of the brush and it has more of an effect on being able to see what it's pulling around the canvas. Notice how there is no black showing up, so there is no color being added to my canvas. It's just working with the colors that are already on this layer. All of the colors I'm working with are on one layer. If there was anything that wasn't on this layer, it wouldn't get affected. So we can just continue to play with this brush with the settings we have and watch it drag the color around in a nice smooth effect. It's actually a lot of fun to play with this, very relaxing, and see how I can pull the colors all the way from one side of the canvas over to the other side of the canvas. Now that you have the idea of how this is working, let's play around with the settings. Let's bring the pull down somewhat and see how that affects it. It's not quite pulling the colors as far as it was before. So let's bring our canvas back to its original stripes. And now let's try this pull in three different locations. So low down and striking across the canvas, this is the effect we get. Now moving it up to the halfway point, it pulls a little better. The colors are pulling further across the canvas. Now if I move it up to max, notice how it drags pretty much the pink all the way across with the touch of the orange. That's a pretty strong pull, but more than I'm looking for because I'm looking to blend the colors. So I think we've decided that we like the pull pretty much at the 50% mark. Let's try a little bit of attack and see what that does. Now if you bring it up just slightly, the attack brings the colors blending a little bit different than if you didn't have it at all. Notice the difference between these two with a slight attack, but no black in there, and no attack at all. So now let's try the charge again. I'm just going to move it up to say maybe 9 to 10%, just a small amount, but see I'm still getting the color quite a bit of it at the beginning, and I don't want that. So the charge pretty much has to stay as disabled. The attack, on the other hand, if I trick it up, to the very, very top, you'll see a lot of black comes through. So the attack can be very, very low or it can be completely off. I get a different look when I do have some of the attack. Oops, and don't hold it too long or you'll get your line showing up, your simple line. So there it is with some of the attack, but that's not really what I'm looking for either. So again, I'm gonna use none for the attack. So I'm pretty happy with this brush. The dilution is up to the max and the pull is about 50%, and this is giving me a simple blender brush that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna show you another little trick here. I'm gonna go into the stroke settings. I have Streamline set to zero, but I'm gonna take it up to max. This is gonna give me a little bit different feel to this brush. I'm gonna play around with the spacing a bit here. So as I drag this around, I actually think I'll leave the spacing at zero, I'm getting a little bit of a fluid look. So what it does is it gives you the feel of a bit of a water brush. By turning the streamline right up to the top, you're creating a little more fluidity to this blender brush. So as it drags the colors around the canvas, there's a little bit more of a feel like there's a water element involved in it. So you can really get some beautiful swirls and mixtures of colors that are lying on your canvas. So now you've created your own simple blender brush and you can play around with the settings on that to get different effects and different looks. And then if you want to move on to different ideas, textures, and grain sources, you can create your own shapes, you can use the ones that are in the library, and you can have a lot of fun creating a bunch of different blender brushes. So what can you do with these blender brushes? Well, I'll give you a few ideas that you can play around with. I've created this flower and all the colors are on one layer and then I'm using my splatter brush from my blender set and it's dragging the colors from the flower onto the canvas around it. Now in this case I have another complete flower lying underneath it because as you drag the blender brush around it's going to take some of the color out of the petals which is also a nice effect as well or you can have a complete one underneath to hide that effect. Now another brush I can use is my oil based blender and then I can just smudge the color around. The really great thing with this is that I don't have to keep going back into my color palette and finding these colors for the splatter effect or smudge effect because they're already on the canvas and it just takes what's already there and moves it around. I use the splatter 
for a lot of my designs. Now another fun idea is you remember when you were young and you just put a blob of paint on a canvas and then you would make something with it. So here I've just put a simple blue circle in the middle and then using the blender brushes I'm turning it into a flower. So I haven't added any more color, I've just used what's already on the canvas. Then I can add a little white circle in the center and again I can use my blender brush just to make a little bit of a vein center in the middle of the flower. So I've worked with two circles and using the blender brushes turn them into a picture. So now that you have your simple blender brush and some great ideas on how to use it as well as some ideas on how to create some other blender brushes, go and make something beautiful. Share it on your social media or on your Instagram and use the hashtag JSPCreates so that I can see it as well. Thank you so much for joining me again today and remember to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future great creative tutorials. We'll see you soon.